Welcome to the Beyond Woman Conversations podcast, the place that inspires beautiful change. Join us, your host, Jacqueline Walker-Johnson and Misha LeVan-Clark. Welcome back to another Beyond Woman Conversations. And I just want to welcome Misha, my co-host. Misha, hi. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Happy Christmas. Thank you, my dear. How is it going for you? Well, you know what, Jackie, I've always loved Christmas, primarily because of the the season itself. I think it's just a kind of joyful um, time and you're hearing Christmas carols and everything. But honestly, Jackie, everything I can also brighter, tell you. Right? Yeah? Everything seems brighter. Everything seems brighter. This seems... And I think people also also speak, um, seem a little bit more happier. I mean, not everybody, because the reality is um, we have to be cognizant that even though Christmas is, 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 is really a season that a lot of people love, it doesn't mean that it is a, a happy one for everybody, you know, for, right. for whatever reasons. But I can always say that for me, Personally, it's a it. I, I regard it as a happy season. You know? mm-hmm. How about you? Like I said, for me, it always seems like everything is so much more bright and more vivid. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. It's like the senses come alive. But as you yeah. rightly say, we we do recognize that it is a time where persons have perhaps lost loved ones. Like I can recall, a girlfriend of mine lost her mom during Christmas so she really doesn't celebrate Christmas anymore um and that's really what we should have been talking about today right of course we will you know touch a little bit on it Uh, and I think Christmas by by virtue of the fact that it has these beautiful colors it's red it's I I think maybe all of that just makes it seem bright or vivid as you say so I, I really do agree with you but as I said it's it's a season that there are people who are suffering pain, sadness because of the, a, a loved one or even loss in other forms. You know, it could have been yeah. it, it's, it, it, a divorce or mm-hmm. something, you know. Because it really is a time for family. It know? is. It, it is. It really is a time for family. It is. And so to me, to me Jackie, even as we, we talk about the season and we enjoy the the festivities and the time spent with friends and loved ones. I also think we we also need to just take some time out to remember those those and all and just be conscious that there are people who may not see or be celebratory because of the experiences that they're going through and and therefore I think it's just also a season that as we go on enjoying ourselves um that we were we take time out to to think about those persons of course yeah so what has it been like for you so far jackie well i'm gonna be honest i i'm not sure what is happening this year i mean i'm not taking away anything from it i'm still feeling good about you know this whole fact the fact that it's christmas um but it's more so for me a focus on um I'm I'm moving away this year from all of the festivities and the preparation and all of those things that comes with Christmas and I'm being a little bit more quiet and um, truly focusing and uh, you know on the meaning of Christmas and being thankful for for where I am. So I'm in a very reflective kind of mode. Yeah, I'm in a quiet mode and I think I'm able to do this because. Pretty much my children have grown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're not expecting the gifts under the tree. We mm-hmm. do have the tree, but they're not really expecting the gifts under the under the under the tree. And um so it gives me an opportunity to use this year as you know, one off reflection because somehow the months leading up to this point, that, that is what it has been for me. 
note that there are some changes that are going on with me. Things that I've prayed about and mm -hmm. the physical thing, more the intangible, the, the things that have more meaning for me and yeah. how I want to grow, you know. So it gives yeah. me an opportunity to be very reflective on that. So I'm thinking that tomorrow I'm not doing the the the, the big the big production, so to speak, of the Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But it's amazing that you're saying that, you know, Jackie, do you know I've been having the same experience? I mean, people ask me this year, but I think it has been, I really have been evolving over time. And I think I've all, I'm also at a place where you are, where Christmas is not about the hustle and the bustle and, and, and all of that anymore. Because the truth is, in this season, as, as, as wonderful and happy and festive as it is, I think it comes with its own levels of stress. And over time, I have been evaluating that. I mean, Jackie, family, lovely, but even being around family sometimes, the busyness of shopping and gift buying and, and, and even the, the social events sometimes places its own level of stress. And I have really been reflecting too. And honestly, I'm wondering if, it, if, if it's because as we get older, our priorities change. Because you even mentioned it with your, your children. I know my kids now, they're, because they're five and, and, and eight, they're into the gift buying. But for several years, yeah. now, I've found, I've found that my focus has been on buying gifts for themselves for them but my husband and I have been more looking forward to it as a day to just really relax mm -hmm. because all year round you've been so busy and when you're busy you know what happens Jackie self-care just takes a back window and I I tell you the most one of the most powerful podcasts we did was on self-care mm -hmm. and the importance of us remembering to take time out for for ourselves to recharge ourselves. And you know what I did today, Jackie? Because of, I've been carrying so much, you know, with the thing that happened with Zara um, at the end of the school, um, last day of school when she broke her arm from a, an accident. And I'm just thinking, I've been carrying a lot and I've just said, you know what? I am going to take a conscious decision that today... Christmas Eve, I'm not going to be on the mall. I'm not going to be in a supermarket. I'm not going to be in the traffic, hustling and bustling to go anywhere. Jackie, I did a spa day today. Oh, wow. I decided that today is my day. And I shut out all the bustle, all the hustle, and all the excitement that brings its own levels of stress. And today was a day that I focus on myself. And like you, tomorrow is a day I'm focusing on gratitude and my family. Not the, first, not the excitement. It would be a quiet day with dinner. And it will really be low-keyed because for me, Jackie, it is just, I want to go into the, the new year. And, and I'm exactly where you are, my friend. Mm -hmm. Just reflecting on life. Reflecting on the year that has, um, the months that have passed, mm -hmm. another year is drawing to a close. Mm -hmm. What do I have to be thankful for? Reflecting on the things that I would like to change and the difference that I'd like to make. And, and just kind of make, make just, just write down some key points um, in terms of what would I like God to do in my life and through me because I think we we I continue to say our lives really don't mean anything if it is not being lived um for others you know our greatest value isn't about our fame or amount of money we have or or how much that we possess but our greatest legacy is really in how we 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 impact other people you know what do we yeah, do for we other serve people? others yeah that's so true yeah how we serve other people and and that's what i want you know i just want to be able to continue to find ways in which 
uh, how I can make a positive difference in other people li- people's life, life. So that's what really it is that I'm doing, you know. You know, today I was driving and reflected on the fact that we're beginning a new decade. Of course, you know, that word is out and everybody is aware. And you touched on something just now in terms of how is it that we're entering into the new decade, not just the new year 2020, but the new decade. And as I looked back on the past 10 years, I realized that 10 years is a lot of time. You yes, know, 10 years ago, I was just moving into my own home. I was in a very stable, I think that's where we met. I was in the investment. Yes. Where we right. Met. Very much so. Um, and I'm just thinking that a lot of people might think that time is moving quickly and it is. But at the same mm-hmm. time, a decade is a lot of time for us to take charge over our circumstances, over our situations and, and, you know, just begin to really, truly, when you think about it, you know, Christmas and the spending and sometimes we, honestly, sometimes we really don't have what we're spending and we go into the new year and, and we're strapped. Very good point, Jackie. You know, and I don't point. think that's how I want to start a new decade. We are entering the new decade uh, in control, you know. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it really is a lot of time, a lot of time for us to, you know, get our act together. And they've, I remember I used to, I used to do a session with a prophet, <laughs> and he would say, "Christians, you know, they're wishing and hoping and wishing and hoping." And we need to stop doing that. We need to yeah. enter the new decade and have it under control and know what it is that we are to do and what we are, we are hoping to accomplish. I just want to, you can, you can interject, Misha, but I feel yeah. like at this point, I just want to share a few things that the first thing that we'll do is really acknowledge the fact that we have some kind of control the experiences um, or how we react to experiences right and everything starts with us acknowledging the fact that we do have some kind of control comes when we plan yeah it might might seem like a cliche but Mm -hmm. it's what we need to do you know, I look, I remember I was having a talk with um, a company once and I was, right. I was using the analogy of the company itself, a very profitable company. Yes. And, I mean, how is it that they make profit? They make profit because they plan. Yes. And year by year. And let me tell you something. If you as a team member or employee, if you're not pulling your weight, because, you know, they do some quarterly review and all of that. Correct, like, correct. You, wait, you have to find a way. Are you out? So yes. Yeah, I, so- I, I, I know I ended a part of that um, conversation asking the question, why is it that we don't do what they do? do it's do, not do no different, you know. And, and do it as personal planning. And I think, you know, our last podcast was about Jackie, um, vision board versus value board and, the question is, what will you be doing? How will you start the new year? Putting, by putting your thoughts on paper, you are, you're actually setting out a plan. What is I it that I want say, to do? Say, you know what? I think people, and I think I struggled with it for a, a, a very long time too. Yeah. I think we take for granted the, the writing down part of it. You know, we yeah. just want to wing it. And it really yes. doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work when yeah. we wing it. We really have to doesn't. do it that doesn't because you know as we were discussing the last time what we were saying is that once you once you do a vision board or whatever it is that you want to call it you know it doesn't have to be um it may not even be you don't you may not even define it as a vision board but i remember what we were saying jackie is that and sharing was that the truth is that is what you what you what what you're putting on paper as like your your vision, your vision for your life um, ahead, and, you're and then you're after sure. that, now you are presenting that. If if you are somebody who is a who is who is um, God fearing, then you know you are committing that to God, and you are also saying, look, 
you're also committing it to yourself because you're actually sen- sen- saying to yourself, okay, this is what I want to do in 20, um, 2020. And the truth is you may not achieve everything because I, as I had shared, I have not accomplished everything on my um, vision board. But the truth is it had helped to, to get, allow me to create that kind of visual image of what it is that I exactly. wanted. And then it, it then helped to move me towards and, having, and, having, put a, having put a plan on paper, Jackie. Yeah, it's I, your blueprint to move forward. Your blueprint, that is, that is the word. It then enables you to then say, and then, and then you have that. You have that somewhere that you can continue to, to be motivated to do you know exactly. and so you're right you know it's about forward planning and we need and to I really think... stop taking for granted this writing down it's it's a yeah. serious thing and it might seem like i said before a cliche you know it's really goal setting you know jackie it's goal setting just yeah. exactly what you said a company does it and we also need to do it for our own life because yeah. if you're employed to the company you're it's mandatory yeah so if you're doing it yeah. for the company at the end of the day right. the company makes the money and and you know you would have contributed to that so we have to do it for ourselves and we have to commit to that we have to make the decision and we have to commit to doing it so we're encouraging persons as to not just be reflect not just reflect on the year that you have had um but also we're saying um Learn the lessons from, 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 from the year. Exactly. Um, it's not about dwelling in the past or, or allowing whatever challenges or, or, or failures that you had um, to limit you going into 2020. But it's about saying, um, what are the, le- the key learning points as I, as I am at this place of reflection? Because being reflective is extremely healthy. Um, it helps you to look at the the lessons that you can learn from the, and, and even celebrate the things that you have been able to accomplish. Yeah. The other thing I would encourage women to do, which I think is very powerful, is to form a group, become each other's accountability partner. Yeah. Sometimes we struggle with accomplishing the goals. Um, I know I'm not alone because if, if, if we all were you know, doing what we set out to do the world, you would see being reflected in the world, right? So yeah. there are persons who are struggling in that era. So you, you're correct, you know, Jackie. I wanted yeah. I'm glad you raised that point and if you don't mind me sharing briefly. Um, you know, when I when I moved here um in twenty thirteen and that's here to Barbados, I was thinking you know, how do I make friends? And here it was, I thought, starting a book club, which I eventually did um, last year, was was for me. But do you know that just today, as I, um, one of the persons in the book club said to me, she wants to thank me. She, she also moved to Bar- um, Barbados from another island. And she said to me that not only has the book, book club helped her to be reading more and opening up her, her mind and transforming her personally. But she said that, you know, it has helped her to grow and, and even become more open and embracing because she was, you know, more shy. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, oh, you know, here it is that I formed the group and I thought the group was, initially I thought the group was going to be helping me and it has tremendously it has helped me tremendously, Jackie. But you know what? The same point you you just made about a woman, woman, a group of women, just forming a group of sisters. Here it was that we came together around around a book club. But the book club has become more than just about words. We, exactly. we you know, you know, you know, my, uh, oh yeah, the slogan for us, the slogan for the book club, the Islanders Book Club is more than just um, words that we are a community, right? Mm -hmm. A community of people who are bonded together, yes, by a love of reading, but it has become so much more because we have become like sisters. 
Good. You know, and yeah. there is just right. so much that when we come, we form that kind of support group for each other, we find that we we are where where our lives and our path and our experiences are not very different. I no. mean, sometimes we're going through some things and you think, I feel alone. But then when you when you just open up to somebody and that person also, because, you know, you and I have had this conversation before that one of the things that we as women really do need to do is, is show ourselves um, trustworthy. Mm-hmm. That, that once um, other persons are vulnerable to us and entrust um, their thoughts to us, that we guard that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We honor that. We honor that trust. And we ought to do that more as women. So uh, being part of a community is not just about being part of a community, but also being a support for one another and also helping each other to be vulnerable, yet feeling a sense of security. Yeah, yeah. It makes you stronger together. Yes. For sure. All right. So the, last, the last point um, I have here is also might seem cliche because we talk about it a lot but a lot of things that we talk about a lot is just the truth life is what it is and life will throw us curve balls but what are we gonna do when you know those curve balls come at us yes to remain positive in all things Mm-hmm. We need to we need to look up and understand where our source and our help and everything that we need to be who we are comes from. Um, right. And so, let's not focus on the things that we, you know, we don't want, but let us focus on the things that we do want. Because once you entertain what you don't want, somehow it might become a reality in your life you know there is this this verse in job i can't pinpoint which one it is but i remember um where he said that the thing i feared most has come upon me something to that effect (laughs) and so we need to not think about what we don't want to happen but what we do want to happen and just you know just try and be positive (laughs) That is something that we have to um, labor at, but it is something that we need to do because Correct. I believe that once we have a positive aura, I'm not going to say that life is going to be hunky dory all the time. If you have to acknowledge a challenge or something negative, then do so, but don't let it consume you. There's a feature in our upcoming issue where one of the women spoke about the fact that she set aside a time to yes. grow and to feel sorry for herself and to acknowledge it and, you know, all of the negative stuff. But yeah. once the one hour has passed, that's it. You pick up the pieces and you move right along. Correct, correct. And correct. that is how the Beyond Woman would want all women to enter 2020 whatever we put out is what's going to come back to us correct correct i always say that so we should labor and we should try we should endeavor so you know just be positive at all times so i would just add to that some you know in our recent bbc um well it's not recent in several years ago richard branson um, provided some ten, 10 tips for, for success. And he spoke about the fact that one of them is just fo- follow your dreams. Just do what you, you set your mind to do, whatever it is, you know, we, you live and enjoy life more meaning in a more meaningful way when you do what your heart calls you to do you know yeah. and it just adds to that positive note that you're you're saying and 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 secondly as he said make make a positive difference you know whatever you do always try to make a positive difference let us just live life to the fullest live every day intentionally and let live make every 
day a meaningful one by the things we do and the things we, we say and even the things we think. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that, Misha. And I just want to, on behalf of the Beyond Woman, just want to thank um, all women who have supported us during 2019. Uh, we look forward to 2020 being an even more awesome year. Our new issue comes out in January. Our new magazine comes out in January. And it will be featuring some really, really awesome women. Um, and we crave you know, your continued support and to, to, to all aspects of the platform, the conversations, the magazine, the collection, just all aspects of the, the Beyond Woman. And um, we just look forward to continue serving you. Uh, you know, we are just all about using stories to enable women to see themselves in a better light among many other um, positive attributes. And we're just grateful for, for, for the outpouring of love and support that we have yeah. done and we expect that it will continue um, and Jack in, in, in the future. And Jackie, I wouldn't want this podcast to end without really extending my own gratitude to you for giving me the opportunity to co-host with you. It has been a real joy. It has been a pleasure. I look forward to every podcast we do together. You have truly become not just a co-host, but a, a friend and a sister. And I thank you so much. And I wish you and your family all the very best for thank the Christmas so season much, and for 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you have been a tower of strength to me. And, you know, I mean, here and uh, outside of the podcast, and it just goes back to the point that was made earlier about a community, you know, creating a community of support with, you know, each other. Because when we come together, we are so much stronger, you know, and when, and when we have a safe space where we can be ourselves and know that, you know, we're going to be loved irrespective. It's a wonderful thing. And it's a thing that allows us to flourish and be even better than who, you know, we, think we ever thought that we could be, you know. And um, as I say that, I, I can't help but give thanks to the Almighty because, you know, he has given all of us this platform to share and, I am just totally amazed at how far it has come, the yes. support that he, it, that has come from him. Yes. <laughs> I cannot begin to talk about that, but we'll probably do that in another podcast. But yes. I give all thanks to the Almighty because without him, I always say I am nothing um, with, without him, but I'm everything with him. Well and said. For persons who don't know we are founded in Ephesians 3 and 20 which tells us that um, God can do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond anything that we could ever hope or imagine for ourselves and truly that is where we want our women to dwell we want our women to dwell in the beyond and that's Wonderful. where the beyond woman comes from so Misha thank you so much and you two have a really peaceful and um loving and everything that you would want for yourself and your family tomorrow and thank you jackie and misha thank Have you a wonderful one and thanks to our listeners thank you